Gloire à Dieu. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Everybody praise the Lord. Tout le monde gloire à Dieu. Today. Aujourd'hui. The second day of our minister professional conference. Le deuxième jour de la conférence des ministres et des professionnels. It opened yesterday. On a commencé hier. And today, I'm talking about something very important. When the last days, and the Lord has given us great, great assignment, responsibility, and duty. What do we need? To get that done. What do we need? As he has told us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We cannot go empty handed. We cannot go without a backbone. Without strength and power. That's why today, as we spoke about faith yesterday, dynamic faith, the faith that does exploits, the faith that overcomes in every challenge of the ministry. We're coming today to talk on power. Power evangelism in the last days close your eyes we are going to pray you present your heart your mind your soul everything you have to the Lord that today as you hear as you learn about power evangelism that the Lord himself will penetrate your heart Penetrate your life and the power that is able to do everything we ought to do that the Lord will grant unto you. Father, we bless your name. We glorify you. We exalt you. We honor you that you have brought us here. You have a purpose for every person attending. Here and everywhere. We're asking Lord that today. Your power will descend from heaven. Come upon every life. And you will do wonders through everyone. In Jesus name. Lord I pray. That this will be. A day of transformation. Weakness will vanish away. Feebleness will vanish away. And the power to go into all the world, evangelize, do exploits. You grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. Speak, Lord, for your servants are hearing. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As I said this morning, we're considering the subject, power evangelism in the last days. Pa power. What do you have power for? As a minister? As a preacher? As a professional, as a person in the kingdom of God, what do we need power for? Power to advance. If we're going to expand and advance in the kingdom of God, we need power. Power as of old. The same power that other people had and they serve the Lord. And the advance in the work of the Lord, we need power to advance. Power to build. We're building something. A kingdom. A house. And we're building for the Lord. Without all the resources, how can you build? Without strength and power, how do you build? Power to build. We need power to conquer. 
as we go forth and evangelize, as we go forth and do the work of the Lord, there will be forces, there will be powers, literally, literally powers, demonic power, whatever, that will come against us. And we need the power to conquer. We need the power to deliver. There are oppressed people. There are people that are clamped down by the evil one. And the Lord sends us forth. And we want to do the work of the Lord. We need the power to deliver. Deliver the oppressed. Deliver all the people that are underneath the yoke of the devil. We need the power to do exploits. Power for exploits. The world is boasting of their power. And we need to deflate the boast of the people of the world. That power actually resides in the church. And we go forth and we do exploits. And it's the power to fortify other people. Many people in the church are weak and feeble and sickly. And we need to go forth and say, hey, church, hey, members of the church, any church, there is enough power to make you stand in any difficulty or danger in life. We need power to go, to grow, and to glow. When you don't have power, you just stay in one place. You don't have power, you stay in one place. You cannot go without power. Neither can you grow without power. When your battery is down, when there's no power in your phone, you can't bring out light there to glow. You need power. As we go forth to evangelize, we need the power to heal. Too many sicknesses in the world and too many sick people in the world. And whatever the name of the sickness, there is a name above every name. And he has given us that name. And we need the power to make use of that name. You need the power to heal. There are internal sicknesses. There are physical sicknesses in the body. There are sicknesses of the mind. The sicknesses of the brain. And we need the power that whatever the shape or the size of that sickness, we need the power to go forth and heal. We need the power to inspire other people. You are inspired yourself. You are on the top of the mountain. And you have the vision of an eagle. And all the people there, they are on the, land, they are on the ground, they are crawling. You need the power to motivate them, inspire them, get them up, and they are also ready to run like you are running. We need the power to join broken parts of the body. The body of Christ. We are divided here and there. We will not join together. We will not preach together. We will not sing together. This one is apart. That one is apart. We need power today. That God will raise people up in the church, in the country. The power to join people together. Families are being separated. They're divorcing each other. They're separating from each other. You go to this, no, I'm done with that man. You go to that, I'm done with that woman. 
separated families that God will raise up somebody and the power to join the man and the wife and they love each other again the power to join broken parts of the body we need the power to keep what we have there are people who get and lose they get and lose what we got yesterday what we got the other week what we got from heaven what we got from the provision of christ the power to keep what we have we need the power to love this world is unlovable you do much for them and they do evil against you you give your heart you give your life and it's like the more you give the more they neglect you the more they criticize you the more they fight against you and then if you don't have the power to love you say, i'm going to sit down you see, there's no use. I'm doing much, but I'm not receiving the respect and the honor and the love. It's the power to love that keeps you going. And you say, like Paul the Apostle, even though the more I serve you and give you, the less I am loved. What kept him going? Paul the Apostle, what kept him going? He had the power to love. You need the power to move mountains. Because there are many mountains that you are going to have to move away in ministry. The power to move. You yourself, you have to be a movable personality. You are not pinned down. You are not pegged down in one place. You are on the move. That takes power. And now as you move. And you have mountains around you. And the mountains do not stop you. The power to move mountains. You need the power to neutralize every negative thing that comes your way that will drive you back from the path of progress. Neutralize the power of the lion on the street. The power of the lion in your way. The power of darkness that will try to uh, overwhelm you with their powers of darkness. And then there's confusion in the heart. And you say, where do I go? I turn to the right, I see confusion there. I turn to the left, I see confusion there. That's the time you need the power to neutralize anything that comes against your life. You need the power to overcome. Overcome. As we walk through life, many things will happen. All those things, they want to overcome you. They want to overwhelm you. They want to destroy you. They want to take the light away from your heart. They want to take all your conviction away from you. He that overcometh, to him will I give the power to reign over nations. The power to overcome. You know, new things come up every new day. And the one you overcame yesterday, the devil will see that you have mastered that one. And then as you are rejoicing and moving on, it appears something new world. They have never seen this before. I've never confronted this before. 
the daily power to overcome whatever may come your way. You need the power to progress. Have you seen uh, the commission that Christ gave? You'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem. Then in Judea, we're making progress. Then in Samaria, we're making progress. Then the uttermost part of the earth. The power to progress. The power to quicken. The things are going dead. Your heart is going dull. Your vision is going dim. And the power to make a life and quicken. You need the power to restore the people who have gone down. And you're visiting them one by one. There are local churches that have gone down. And you're visiting them one by one. And every time you go there, there's something to restore. There's someone to renew. There's someone to refresh. The power that God gives us and he knows that we need to restore this and renew that and refresh that. The power coming from the source to get that done. We need power. We need the power to shake everything shakeable. You know, there are people that go places and there's no shaking. Anywhere Paul the Apostle went, it's either that they riot or they receive what he has bought. It's either they shout, yes, we accept. Or another one will shout, no, we don't accept. The power to shake everything shakeable. And that's the power we need. It's not the power to shake in the church during prayer and speaking in tongues and shaking and shaking. That, no, that one doesn't benefit anybody out there. But the power to shake whatever is shakeable. Shake them out of the way. It says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils. In my name, they'll take up serpents and throw them away. The power to shake everything is shakeable. We need the power to teach and to transform. If sinners come and they listen to us and they remain sinners, where is the power to teach and to transform? If the weak comes and they remain weak after administration, where's the power to teach and to transform? If the ignorant comes and he remains ignorant, where's the power to teach and to transform? We need the power to teach and to transform lives. The power to unite. Unite people with God. The sinner separated by a gulf from the Almighty God, and then you come, is so far away, and with your power, with your proclamation, you bring him, you unite him, reconcile him with the Almighty God. We need the power for vision. When there's no vision, the people perish. When there's no vision, we go to church from Sunday to Sunday, from month to month. We do the same old thing that is not yielding any result. But the, the power for vision. I see it before it's there. I see it before my physical eyes can see. I see the many nations and the many children even before the first one I seek was born. 
is the power for vision. We need the power for work, for wonders. That as we're going to the field, the power that knows beyond any shadow of doubt that there are going to be wonders. The power that was so attached to the wonder walker. His name is wonderful. We're so attached to him. There's no shadow of doubt. As I'm going out today, there will be wonders. And we need the power for expectation of new experiences. And the power for yoke breaking. Any yoke, any lie. You take care of that yoke and you break that yoke. You are not somebody, a pastor, a minister, a worker. And you are always looking for somebody to break even the yoke in your life. Yokes broken. Yokes destroyed. And you never say, this is the only challenge I have in my life, but it's impossible. What can I do? You will do something. Now, you need the power to take a zero and make him a hero. First of all, in your life, you look like a zero. I see no strength, no power, no vision, no unction, no anointing, no hope, no help. You say, I can continue like this. I look like a zero. God will start with you today. I said, God will start with you today. If anybody feels like I'm a zero, that's what I used to feel many years ago. But the Lord who turned my life around will turn your life around. He took a zero and made him a hero. Anybody going to become a hero there? Anybody? God will do it. All, all power. That's what it means. All power. Look at it now in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. As we come to Christ, as we join with Christ, as we live in Christ, as we minister in Christ, as we go forth in the name of the Lord Jesus, He, he reminds us, he said, anywhere you are, everywhere you are, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Then in verse 19 it says, go ye therefore. You are not going because, you know, you're alone by yourself. It says, therefore, because all power is given unto me in heaven and earth, go ye therefore. And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. In verse 20, it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always remember he has all power and he says with all the power he has in the whole universe i am with you always 
even unto the end of the world. And everybody said, Amen. The power of God is available for us. In Psalm 110. I'm reading there from verse 3. It says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. They say, Will you teach us Sunday school this coming Sunday? Pastor, please, I cannot. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Brother, we're thinking of planting a church in that um, tribe, in that prefecture. Will you be able to do that? Pastor, please, excuse me. I cannot do it. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Sister, we have uh, we are prayer meeting tonight. And the Lord is directing the pastor to make you lead the prayer meeting tonight. Pastor, I'm sorry. The way I feel inside me. I don't think I can lead a women's prayer meeting tonight. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Somebody is sick over there. Brother or sister, please. Lay hands on him. He will be here. Pastor, I've never done that. I'm sorry. I cannot. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Can, somebody has been called to preach. And then the preacher did not show up. And uh, the organizers of the program, they looked around. And they said, please, our, we're looking for a preacher. We cannot get him on phone. We cannot contact him. Would you please give the message tonight? And then, I'm sorry, you should have told me two weeks ago. It takes me time to prepare. I cannot. The people shall be willing in the day of thy power. It is when the power we are talking about, when that power comes upon your life, that is the willingness that will show up. Your time has come. I said your time has come. My time came. There was a great meeting. The hall was filled up. Because they were expecting somebody to come. A well-known preacher. A preacher I knew myself. And we were singing and singing and singing. He didn't show up. And then they continued, they prayed and prayed, he didn't show up. And I was sitting down there, expecting our great preacher to come. And then, when the time was going and it appears, they may not come. The person, the leader of the, of the meeting, he came to me and whispered in my ears, he said, we can't see our preacher. You are the preacher tonight. I didn't say, oh, I cannot. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Will you do it? I said, yes, I will. Which scripture what was I going to use? I don't know. 
what am I going to tell the people? I didn't know. So I took my Bible. And then the, and the people in Lagos at that time, they didn't know me. Nobody knew me in Lagos. And so I said, let us pray. And we prayed. And I said, my topic tonight is, I announced my topic. And the preaching came. Why? Because I'm linked to Jesus of all power. Souls were saved. Many people were blessed. And everything shakeable was shaking out of their lives. I was willing. You are willing. And your time must now come. We didn't see the preacher we were expecting for three days. The meeting was to be for three days. The first day was so good. They said I should continue the second day. I should continue the third day. That's how the people of Lagos knew that somebody came to Lagos called W.F. Komori. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. That's why today we're gathered together and we're talking on power evangelism in the last days. As in the days of old, today, a new day for you. In these last days, until the end of the world, the Lord will deposit appropriate power in your life in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one. I'm talking to you on the promise of power to evangelize. Number two, the preparation for power to do exploits. Number three, the proclamation in the power of an evangelist. Number one, we're looking at the promise of power to evangelize. He gave uh, the promise. And every promise that Christ gave uh, will be fulfilled. Fulfilled in your life today. If I promised you something. Human being. Just a pastor. And I said come tomorrow at this time. And I will give you this. You believe, don't you believe? Yes, you believe. You will come at that time. You know that that man, a man like you, he promised you this, he will give it to you. Now the man of Galilee, the son of God, the son of man, the very savior of the world, the personification of the truth. The one that never, never lies. He called you and he gave you a promise. And he said, if you come to me, this is what I will do. He is the one, we call him the promise keeper. And he does whatever he has promised. What promise has he given us that relates with power? Acts of the Apostle chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but ye shall receive power. When you come to Christ, you don't receive weakness. 
When you come to Christ, you don't receive feebleness. When you come to Christ, you don't receive trembling and fear. When you come to Christ, you receive power. It says, and you shall, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses. Have you noticed those two sentences there? And there's nothing in between them. And there's no gap in between them. And there's no wall of barrier in between them. Ye shall receive power. And then ye shall be witnesses unto me. The power to be a witness unto the Lord. The power to speak forthright. The power to be so energized. Nothing resists you or pushes you away. That's the promise he has given. And he said he shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem and in all Judea. He didn't say first in Jerusalem. Finish everything you need to do in Jerusalem. Seal it up. And then go to the next place, Judea. He said both in Jerusalem and in Judea. And in Samaria. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. There are people that feel we must finish this first in Jerusalem. After we have finished and settled and sealed the work in Jerusalem, then we go to all Judea. He says, no, at the same time, simultaneously, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. He said, we shall receive power. As you come this morning, before you go back home, what are you going to receive? What are you going to receive? And remember, you receive the power to advance, to build, to conquer, to do exploits, to deliver power for exploits. Before you go home this morning, I say again, what are you going to receive? You see the people at the time of Jesus, before they left their home, and they're coming to Jesus, that woman said, I'm going to Jesus now. And when I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. They decided what they were going to receive before they came. And they were not disappointed. You will not be disappointed. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power. You want to visit somebody. And he says, say, please come at this time. You say, I want to take my breakfast before I come. You say, please, please. Don't take breakfast. Don't eat anything. I will give you breakfast. And so you left home. You didn't take breakfast. And then you come. What will you get from that person before you return? Your breakfast. Because they said, don't eat, I will give you breakfast. Somebody wants to work for God. He's looking for power. 
it goes to psychology it goes to philosophy it goes to the elders of the village and uh, the lord said what are you looking for i'm looking for power before i come to you he said please don't look for that leave all the other powers those other powers will fail at one point he said come i'll give you power and praise the lord this morning we have come i said we have come what are we going to get what are you going to get behold look at this behold think of this behold i give unto you power power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you you will take power from this place this morning when you get back home any challenge that comes against your life you bring out that power you will scatter them in jesus name Look at <coughs> Acts chapter 4. <coughs> Acts chapter 4. We're looking at verse 31. In verse 31, look at what the Lord says here. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together it's like as we are here now and we rise up to pray we've been praying before but the prayer for power today it says the place the building was shaking when they were praying that shaking of the building where they were praying is a prophecy that as they finish the prayer that shakes the place they were as they went out everything outside there was shake and they were all filled with the holy ghost and they speak the word with boldness Look at verse 33. In verse 33, and with great power. With great power. For you. With great power. For everyone today, for great, with great power. Gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. That's the promise, it will fulfill it. We're coming to point number two. Point number two is the preparation for power to do exploits. The preparation we make so that we can do exploits. Being with Christ transfers power into our lives, into our ministries. And when you come to Christ and you are linked together, reconciled together with God through Christ, power begins in your life. Salvation, power. He gave them power to become the sons of God as they received him. Temptation comes, you have power. Power to overcome. Because you realize temptation is just the word coming out of somebody and wanting to deflect or uh, di 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 distract your attention and make you do what you didn't plan to do. The 
the tempter uses words. You know, you also have word. And the word you have has now got the power of Christ in it. And that word you have will overcome and destroy and bury all the words of that man, that woman that is speaking words of temptation. Temptation is just action. The action of the tempter. And that action is to jolt you. But now, you become a man of action yourself. And so, and your own action is saturated with the power of Christ. And the tempter that brings up a tempting action, uh, confronts your own action, uh, and your powerful, mighty action uh, will overcome the action of the tempter. The tempter is a dramatist. And he's trying to dramatize and show you something. And he showed Jesus Christ all the ends of the earth. It's just showing a picture. It shows you that this is what you have. Then you also, you are dramatist yourself. You know what you have. And you show that to the tempter. And what you show has power, has inspiration. What you show will blot out, eliminate what he is trying to show. That's, that's the power we have. And it's the power to overcome Satan and demons and every other thing. That's the power he has given unto us. And we're prepared to have that power. Are you prepared? Are you ready? Do you want? Do you desire? That power that overcomes all of the power against your life. Look at Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. It says, and such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall he corrupt by flatteries. We have many stories in our tribes. And all the tribes of the world, they have peculiar fables and peculiar stories. The fable may be between a tortoise and a bird. The story may always sometimes between the tortoise and the rabbit. And, and sometimes they give us the fable. They said that this bird had something precious and something great. And then the, the uh, kind of cunning, wise, animal. The tortoise will say, ah, what a great bird you are. And the colors of your feathers, I've never seen it before. And that bird is holding something that the tortoise wants to have. And flatter and flatter and flatter the bird until the bird will say, That's right, I'm the most beautiful creature on the face of the earth. And then what is precious in his sand, he holds with a loose sand, and the thing drops, and the tortoise picks it, and it's gone, and flattery has spoiled that other creature. Isn't that what is done all over the world? That you are flattered until you forget yourself. You're lifted up until you forget yourself. You're given a fake promise until you forget yourself. 
And it says they shall be they shall be corrupted and conquered by flatteries. And the first preparation we make is to turn away from all praise of men. To turn away so that they will not turn your head with flattery. Turn away from all those flatteries. And say, I don't need Satan to tell me who I am. Christ has already told me who I am. And then it says, and the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. They are, not, they are not bothered. I want to know myself more. I want to look at the mirror. I want to hear the flatteries. I want to know what people are saying about me. They abandon all that. And they say, I want to know God more. And the people that do know their God. I don't need to know any other personality. I need to know God, the God who saves, the God who sanctifies, the God who baptizes and fills and saturates with the Holy Ghost, the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the God who cannot fail and the God who cannot change. I want to know God more, the God who promises to be my father. The God who can do all things in my life. I need to know that God more. The God who is present today as he was yesterday, as he will be in the future. The God who says himself and myself were the majority. The God who says all those promises in the Bible, I gave them to you. The God who says, I'm the present ever living God. The people that do know their God. You know God in the time of trial. You know God in the time of sickness. You know God in the time of ministry. You know God in the period of your calling. You know God when you are in a familiar territory. You know God when you are in an unfamiliar territory. You know God when friends are there. You know God when friendly foes are there. They are fiendish friends. They are fiendish, uh, friendly foes. They show the appearance of a smile of love, but they're thinking of what to do to ruin you and to wreck you. Anywhere you are, with friendly foes, the God who says, never mind, I know they are, what they're going to bring out of their pocket. I've given you the victory and the power to overcome already. The people the people that the people that do know their God shall be strong. Not their gods. Not their idol. Not their magic. Not the foreign power. The people that do know the God of heaven. They shall be strong. It's like I shall come to you personally and look at your eyeballs there and say you will be strong. You know God? Who do you fear? You know God? How can you panic? You know God? How can even the slightest thought of failure ever come to your mind? The people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Not only that, if you tell me you are strong and you do nothing, where is the strength? If you tell me you are strong and you don't rise up and do something, where is the strength? 
if you tell me you are strong and you are talking weakness i cannot i will not i am weak i am a non-entity where is your strength but the the people that do know their god and they say the god of abraham is my god and the god of elijah he is my god and Elijah did not have any chance talking to God that I don't have. He is my God. You, you will be strong. And you will do, you will do exploits. This is now your time. I am growing older. I'm growing older. And I'm giving everything I've got to the younger generation. Yeah. And I say, the younger generation will go beyond me in Jesus' name. Yeah. But you know what I did? I knew that God is my God. And then I rose up. I didn't feel the power. I see something was shaking. It's just like when you got married. You went to the altar. Before that day, you have been thinking, when I get married, the blood will rush into my brain. When I get married, I'll be mad with love. When I get married, Marriage will go to my fingers and go to my feet and go everywhere. I will feel on top of the world. And then the day came. And you got married. And you're looking for the blood to rush into your brain. Blood did not rush. You didn't feel taller. You didn't feel bigger. But you are married. I said you are married. The same thing with the power of God. I think when I have power, I feel my head will be shaking. My hands will be uncontrollable. My feet will be uncontrollable. When I, when I get power, I will see stars all over me. When I get power, I feel funny. And you get power this morning. You didn't see, you didn't see any dancing star. You didn't feel any rush of anything to your brain. Just like when you were married. And you didn't feel anything. But you are married, you are married. The same thing, power comes to you this morning. You will not feel anything. Like Gideon. He had the power. He didn't feel anything. <clears throat> and the angel said, go in this thy power. And he said, me? Do I have power? I'm the least in our family. And the angel said, you have the power. The power of God is upon your life. And so you are not waiting for feeling this morning. The people that do know their God, they will be strong. You will be strong. Outside there, you will be strong. And you will do exploits. We, we have a young man in um, Nigeria. He was he's still just a young man. He had never done crusade before. And so he decided in a difficult part of our country. He was going to do crusade. And what he did, he watched one of the, some of the places where I had preached. And he watched it so much that he would speak like me. 
And then he wanted to pray for the sick. He had never prayed for the sick in his life. But he said, I'm going to copy, mimic, not mock. I'm going to mimic the way Pastor Komi does it. And so he got there. And he preached. He took the outline just like I will do. And he says, you want to be saved. Born again. Anywhere you are. Raise up your hand. They raised up their hand. And he prayed for them. And he assured them, you are saved. He said, I, he, he, he said, the way I normally, he said, I'm going to pray for you now. And you will be healed. He says, when I pray. You check yourself. You see the miracle there. This young man had never done anything like that in his life before. And so, you see, raise up your hand. Lay the hand where you have the problem. And he did. And from beginning to the end, he said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you now that all these people Heal them in Jesus' name. And then when he finished, he said, the healing is there. Check up yourself. If you see the healing there, come out to my left hand side here. And he started coming. They didn't know he had never done like that before. And he said, give your testimony. Revival broke out. Through that young man's life. And all he did is to say, how will Pastor Komuyi say this? How will he say this? And he said it exactly like that. Miracles took place. The devil doesn't know any difference between Komuyi and yourself. You are the only one that knows he is a Nigerian and I am a Togolese. The devil doesn't know any difference. It's what you say that gives him information. I am weak. Ah, I didn't know anybody that has Christ was ever weak. Are you saying you are weak? Uh -huh, now I know you are weak. You are not weak. Christ lives on the inside of me. He is my savior. Any sickness will bow before me. Any power of Satan will be crushed by me. The demons, the demons are already trembling for you. How can two people be trembling at the same time? When you stand, with Christ in you, or the power in you, the devil trembles. He wants to run away. Then he lifts up his eyes and he sees you trembling. And the devil says, Why how will two of us be trembling at the same time? And he stops his trembling because he saw you trembling. Remain strong. Talk strong. Pray strong. That disease will tremble and go away. That demon will tremble and go away. The people, the people that do know their God, they will be strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. You are strong. We we'll come to point number three now. Point number three. We're looking at the proclamation in the power 
of an evangelist. We have different ministries in the church. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. The apostle, that's represented by your thumb. That's the hand, that's the thumb, the finger that holds everything together with the other fingers. The prophet, that's the one that points and says, Thou art the man. The evangelist is the finger that is uh, longer than the rest of them because he reaches to the place beyond. And this uh, next finger is the pastor because it represents love. This finger, the little one, is the one you put in your ears when you want to scratch something there. That's the teacher. There are people that have just one ministry. There are others that have all the fivefold ministry. Paul was an apostle. Paul was a prophet. The trumpet shall sound. And the dead, the Christ shall rise. And we which are left here shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. That's prophecy coming from Paul the apostle. And Paul was an evangelist. And the one that went to the regions beyond. And Paul was a pastor. If I'm not a father unto others, am I not a father unto you? And Paul was a teacher. He taught the word of God. So, there are some people that have the five-fold ministry all together like Paul the Apostle. But now we're talking about the evangelist. In 2 Thessalon Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. In verse 5, but watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. What does the evangelist do? He evangelizes individuals. He evangelizes families. He evangelizes communities. He goes everywhere to preach the gospel that calls the sinner from his sinfulness and calls him to the Savior for salvation and redemption. And the evangelist has the work to do. And you have the work of the evangelist to do. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. The ministry of the evangelist. You want to show the proof. We call them fruit or proof producers. Anywhere you go as an evangelist, you preach the evangel. You show the love of God for all sinners that whosoever comes will be saved. Do the work. Exert yourself. Preach the gospel. Love the people you are preaching the gospel to. You are not like Jonah. Yet 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. And you want them to die in their sin. You'll be like Paul the Apostle. He says, my desire is that all Israel should be saved. And let me show you an example before we round up. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 5. Acts chapter 8, we're looking at verse 5. Then Philip 
went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. Now, Philip was not an ordained evangelist or pastor or apostle. He was ordained to get food, distribute food to the hungry, poor believers. Circumstances drove them from Jerusalem and from the food distribution ministry to all the places they went. Philip had never occupied the position of evangelist when he was in Jerusalem. Philip did not have the assignment of evangelizing communities or cities when he was in Jerusalem. Persecution broke out in Jerusalem. And because of that persecution, all the believers were scattered. And everyone scattered, they went about preaching the word. And now Philip found himself in Samaria, all alone, without any supporting ministry. All alone without a partner. And Philip went down to the city of Samaria. And he had nothing else to do. I have Christ. Let me talk about Christ. I know Christ. Let me preach Christ to them. I'm connected with Christ. And the power of Christ is in me. Let me tell them what I know. I don't know the story of Samaria. I'm not going to go into history. I've not gone to university to go and study all the skill in Samaria. I'm not going to talk about what I don't know. The only thing, the only one I know, I know Jesus. Anybody here that knows Jesus? Anybody here that knows Jesus? You know him as Savior? You know him is healer. You know him is the founder and the finisher of our faith. You know him as the foundation of every good thing we get from the Lord. Talk about what you know. Don't talk about what you don't know. Why the persecution? I don't know why. Don't talk about what you don't know. Why were we driven away from Jerusalem and now I'm in Samaria? I don't know. Don't talk about what you don't know. What kind, what kind of religion do you have here? I don't know. Don't talk about what you don't know. Talk about what you know. There's darkness there. Don't talk about darkness. When you bring in the light, the darkness will vanish away. There are voodoo people there, idol worshippers, there are fetish people there. I don't know. Don't talk about what you don't know. Talk about what you know. Thank God I know Jesus. He's the healer of the sick. Is the deliverer of the demonized. And he proclaimed Christ unto them. Look at verse 6. In verse 6, And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing. As you go out to do the work of an evangelist. Remember, 
that when they were scattered on Jerusalem, the apostles did not have chance to lay hands on them. You are feeling? I lay hands on you. Go to Samaria and do exploits there. Nothing like that. Persecution came. Everybody started running. And Philip ran. And he ran to Samaria. And when he was in Samaria, he spoke about Jesus the Savior. About Jesus the healer. About Jesus the deliverer. And when you talk about Jesus, he was sure. You know, we're just talking. And then I mentioned brother so-and-so. All of a sudden, brother so-and-so came. Ah, where are you coming from? We were just talking about you. My brother, is that not so? Yes, we're talking about you. And you showed up. Every time you talk about Jesus, he will show up. The healer will show up. The deliverer will show up. The Savior will show up. Talk about him. If he's not there, you talk more about him. If he's not there, you talk more about him. The more you talk about Jesus to everyone, he will show up there. Miracles will happen in Jesus' name. And then in verse 7, it says, For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with pulses, and what had lame were healed. Verse 8, And there was great joy in that city. Look at all our cities in our country here. All our towns, all our villages. If we distribute ourselves as the Spirit leads you, sister, go there. Brother, go there. And uh, madam, go there. Bishop, go there. Prophet, go there. Pastor, go there. Power will circulate in this nation. Amen. Salvation comes to our nation. Healing comes to our nation. I will hear the testimony of our country here. Great joy. Great deliverance. Great liberation. Great salvation. Great healing. The power is now transferred to me. I saw up and let us pray. Tell the Lord, power has come. You are the carrier of that power. You are the one, the shakers of the land. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. And say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Let the power direct you, shake you, move you, and move on to the next place you have to go. Power. Power to evangelize. Power for exploits. Power to be demonstrated. Power to advance. Power to build the kingdom. The power to conquer. The power to deliver. The power to fortify others. The power to go. The power to grow. The power to glow. The power to heal. The power to inspire others. The power to join families together. The power to keep and the power to love. The power to move mountains. 
the power to navigate and to neutralize. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, I have the power today. The power to overcome. Overcome every challenge. Overcome every difficulty. The power to progress. The power to penetrate. Penetrate your country. Penetrate your community. The power to quicken and make alive. The power to possess. Possess the land. The power to renew. The power to revive. The power to restore. Tell the Lord that He will give you, grant you the power. He will do it. He will do it. That the power that will help you to shake everything shakeable. Power. Power. Power to do the incredible. He'll give you the power. He'll give you the power. The power to teach and to transform. Oh Lord, I want to be a real teacher of the world. And transform the lives of the people that listen to me. The power to teach and to transform. The power to unite people with God. Reconcile people with God. The power to have the victory. Power for victory. Power for victory victory over sin victory over sickness victory over Satan the power for victory the power to walk wonders 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 he is the wonderful one he is the wonder walker he lives in you he abides in you and the power to exalt the power to explore the power of the Lord upon your life the power to break yokes the power to break yokes out of every life power power and the power to take the zeros and to make them heroes. Power. He gave us the promise. Power. He gave you the promise. Power. I give unto you power. To tread on serpents and scorpions. And power over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. You don't tremble before the trembling demon. Everything before you, every negative thing, is trembling already. Why will you tremble under and before a trembling enemy? Preparation for power. Preparation for power. Clear everything out of your life that will hinder the flow of power in your life. 
wake up in the morning and think of what you have. I have power. Move on in the day and think of what you have. I have power. And when you minister, minister in power. Minister with assurance. Power. Power. I have power. That's what he has given you. I have power. Proclaim that power. Don't talk about weakness. Proclaim that power. Don't talk about your fear. Proclaim that power. Don't talk about darkness. Proclaim that power. Don't talk about the history of Samaria. Proclaim that power. Don't talk about when I was a nobody, I was nothing. Talk about that power. It's what we're talking about. You will demonstrate. It's what we're talking about. You will possess. It's what we're talking about. You will see manifested. Talk about the power. Talk about his promise. Talk about what you have. Don't talk about what you don't have. You have power. They that know their God shall be strong and they will do exploits. Power evangelism in these last days. Don't say I am ignorant. The devil doesn't know that. Don't give him information. Don't say, I am weak. The devil doesn't know that. Don't give him information. I am just a woman. You don't have to say that. Talk about Christ, the power of God in man. Christ, the power of God in the woman talk about who you have talk about who you know talk about the power you have that's what you're talking about don't talk, don't talk about your fears I'm timid don't talk about that I'm fearful don't talk about that talk about who you have I am married to Christ what he has I have what he did I can do let the weak say I am strong let the power carry you let the power move you let that power flow to you. I have. I have. I have. I know. I'll do. I can do all things. I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me.
In Jesus' name we pray. How many people here know that you have power? You know from the depth of your heart that Christ cannot leave his follower powerless and weak. You know that the God of all power that has power to give to billions of people that he cannot leave you powerless. You know, as a father, he cannot throw his child to a powerful lion and said, lion, that's my child. Do whatever you want with him. Can God do that? Can he allow the people of the world to have more power than his child? I have power. I have power. I have power. I have power. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand and claim it. Raise up that hand now. Father, in Jesus' name. I pray that every kind of spiritual weakness, every kind of psychological weakness, any kind of human weakness, I send them out. Come out in Jesus' name. I pray the power from heaven will come to your heart right now. Saturate your life right now. Feel your spirit right now. Heavenly power come to everyone in Jesus' name. The power to arise. The power to achieve. The power to advance. The power to do everything you have called us to do. Give to every brother, every sister, every minister, every member of your church. In Jesus name. Confidence in everyone. Courage in everyone. The power to move on and not to go back in everyone in Jesus' name. The power to succeed in the ministry you have called us to. The minister, the power to scatter all the works of the devil. The power to break every yoke. And the power to move on without ever getting tired. Power from heaven. Power on earth. Power for ministry. Power for moving mountains. Power to reproduce. Power to recreate. Power to transform. And a power to walk like a militant soldier never defeated in Jesus' name. Thank, thank you, Lord. I got it. Thank you, Lord. I got it. Thank you, Lord. I got it. I got it. I got it. I possess. I receive. I will do exploits. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Thank you and God bless you.